four. There's good drinking song, another song that I don't believe has been heard for a while around here. I did want to take a moment to introduce Sinda Nosliger, who's from the Bentley Library, who is one of my partners in crime and putting this project together. So big round of applause. Guys, get another round of applause for Grant, Isaac, and Clement on the arrangement. Yeah. All right, so you guys just heard the Michigan drinking song. Um, obviously not, probably one of the most not popular tunes to come out of Michigan, you know. Premiered in 1904, accredited to this dude, uh, Charles D. Counts, Toledo law student. His professional name, though, was M.B. Cooper. And this guy, Harlan P. Briggs, was also important in uh, creating the song and publishing the song. He, um, with some other songs, like Men of Yost and the Yale Bula, the Michigan Drinking Song was published at Root Music by Ann Arbor or at Root Music in Ann Arbor. And after uh, attending law school, he returned to Lido, where um, the song was republished and the copyright was transferred. One of the places where the song was performed early on. Dead. <laughs> I 
all right, all right. Uh, in 1901, Coach Fielding H. Yost led his Michigan team to a perfect season, and they won the first ever Rose Bowl. So from 1901 to 1904, Michigan, they didn't lose a game, and they only tied once. So because of this, they're like, let's make a drinking song about it. So they, they did that. And so, yeah. So the coach Yost himself, he found, so the song was kind of like, because prohibition kind of happened during this time, like they kind of limited how this song was heard, which is why this was the first time this was like ever heard. So yeah, that's pretty much just like it. <laughs> so why did it disappear? <laughs> Due to the unfortunate timing of the social movement in the early 1900s, Prohibition played a large role in minimizing the song's impact to the Michigan experience. So the sale of alcohol was already very closely regulated in 1903, and in 1918 the sale of alcohol in Ann Arbor was outlawed, which contributed significantly to the decline of this song's popularity. And in addition to the restriction on alcohol in the 1920s, there was also a social push to, to start censorship in the songs at Michigan. And so while the Michigan drinking song was received well at its premiere, the society of the early 1900s was ill-equipped to absorb the song, resulting in the eventual fade of its obscurity. So, thank you. Thank you.